only time Crowbar's ever played uh, Canada, period, was with Pantera way back in the early 90s, maybe like like the Vulgar Display or maybe uh, Fabian Driven Tour. So it's been like 20 years, you know, or yeah. 70. Or 30, no, 20, not 30. 20. <laughs> yeah. I, get, uh, I get lost. I was actually um, hoping to see you guys with the Skin Lab and SOD here. Right. I believe 97 or 98. And I was the all fellow dressed. Cycle. Well, what happened with that was uh, Billy Milano had come up and told me like the day before or something that was, you know, the day before, like a day or two before we were coming to Canada that uh, he's like, man, Gio, what happened to Sick of It All? I'm like, no. And he said um, they had $70,000 cash on them that got confiscated because it had cocaine residue on some of the money. Well, all American money has, you know, uh, cocaine yeah, residue yeah. on it. And we kind of freaked out and we were like, you know, we weren't making much money for the gig. We're like, man, fuck that. The little bit of money we do have, if they <laughs> take it, we're fucked. So uh, we just got a hotel and had a day off, you know. Cool. But well, we made it today. Yeah. Hope it was enjoyable. There's a lot of people today who are obviously waiting to see you guys again. For many yeah, years. we're excited. And I mean, we really are. And this is a, another country for you, dear. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Now, talking a little bit earlier with your wife about uh, the status of the band. As a fan of the band for 20 years, I've not seen you guys get more coverage than you have uh, on this most recent Yeah, album. I agree. Sure. I agree. Uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, personally, you know, me as a fan, um, I've wanted to see for many years. You know, it, it pissed me off, obviously. All those great albums mm -hmm. came out, and they just weren't getting out there. Like they should have, um, you know. It's Ooh, been it, well it, promoted. This this one it really, really, really has, and it, it was just hard. You know, it was like, I mean, you know, in two thousand two, really. I mean, I made a commitment. We all did that. Down was going to be our main band, and uh, obviously, a lot has gone on since then. And we had a hiatus, you know, and Phil was, was doing Super Joint Ritual and some other things. And of course we had Hurricane Katrina. Well, we all, you know, reinvested and rededicated ourselves to Down in 2006 when we did our first European tour ever with Down. Uh, and things were great, you know, it should, but it, it's one of those things where, you know, Phil's, Phil's Philip and he's, by all means, got the right to do whatever the hell he wants. So, you know, he, he'll get where he'll, he'll go, you know what, guys, I need a, a break for a little while. I want to do a solo record. I want to concentrate on a label and produce some records, and, you know, and stuff like that. And he's, you know, he deserves it, of course. And he's uh, in a position where he's able to do that. And then I'd hurry up and try to scramble and get something done with Crowbar. And it just, you know, things just, it just got whatever, you know. Everybody knows the story now and, you know, and everything's wonderful. With with, uh, with the crowbar guys and the down guys, and uh, and I like good stuff, and that's the truth. Um, and uh, you know, for for me now, it's finally a chance so to to do crowbar, um, 100. percent And Robin was a big part of it, honestly, because you know, um, as myself and down were separating, it was like I was like, you know, she was really my number one fan with believing that we could make crowbar get to the next level. <laughs> And, you know, we sat down, we talked about it, you know, and, yes. and thought about it, <laughs> believe me. I mean, it's and, scary to leave, right. to leave a big band like that. I mean, just, I understood his feelings about it, and, but, but I, know, I knew it, it that just, you could do it. And you were right. With and, Crowbar, you know, just... It's for just, us, it's great because it really is our family business. That's how we, what we consider it. And, uh, I mean, you know, when we're at home... We're in family mode, but at the same time, it's actually a lot easier. And I told told Robin because this is our first real tour managing, like real tour managing. And this is, you know, this includes it's 27 shows in 30 days all across the United States, uh, four Canadian shows. And I'm like, you can do this. You know, we, we help her out a bit, but she's really done all all the work. And uh, I told her, I said, watch when you get on the road. It'll be so much easier to, to, to get things accomplished and do work. Because trying to juggle family life at home and, and really concentrate on work is very difficult. When you're on the road, yeah. you're just concentrating. I mean, of course, we it's check true. in with the kids every day, you know, multiple times and make sure everybody's good. And, and call I'm trying them to and get on the computer and, and I'm like, let me, let me advance the show. And right, it's, it's, like, like, it's okay, it's, send them this. The input list I probably have in my head now. <laughs> and you know just 
making sure everything's set, and I get nervous about it. I'm like, oh, I hope I have it right. It's just easy. It's easier to do. To on the do. road, it's easier. Yeah, because you're on the road, you're focused, your job every yes. day. You know, you're in. You're in that. We're rolling now. I think today's a seventh show. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Seventh. That's yeah. Seventh. Seventh in a row. I think we have fifteen in a row before we get a break, mm-hmm. which is about normal for for me. Um, so uh, you know we're we're rolling. I mean we get along with the guys on, on in the tour package. Oh, great. everybody's great. Everybody's awesome. We all work package, together. Definitely. Uh, it's really going good. So you know we're excited to be. Although here the again. merchandise racks look better than mine. Uh, well, I will say. <laughs> only only sometimes. No, always. Today, yeah. I kind of like it today. It's a little ghetto, but you know. But they like it works. they have all this stuff wrapped. I have mine just clipped up. But I mean it's it's all good though. It, it, it's a joke. They, they make fun of me. But it's all good. I think I make fun of my own self. You do. Yeah. So I always make fun of myself, too, and that's one of the, one of the good things in life. Yes. If you can't uh, make an ass of yourself and laugh about it, then, you know, you're too... too, uh, you know, I'm just too glad to be able to be with him. And, just... and work together. And we work. And believe me, you know, it's not like, you know, um, I always tell people... I don't get uh, sick of you. I don't get sick of you either. That's, that's a what great it, thing. It's crazy. That's how we are at home. It's Usually like, people are like, oh, I can't wait to get right, away. And Jesus, I can't wait. It's like it's take true. a break from someone or go have a couple of drinks with their friends and stuff like that. And I don't, I just. Me either. We don't really do that. I love being at home with them and my son. That's our thing. And we all constantly just joke with each other at home. And then on the road, I'm happy being with them too because I, I, I miss them when it's. I really do. So. Well, I mean, I'm 49. She's about to be 48. I'm 47, <laughs> by the way. I'm not 48 yet. Well, I'm here like two months, babe. All right. But uh, actually, two months from today. Yeah. No, three months from today. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the point is, we're <laughs> not getting any younger. So uh, we didn't get married and, and have, even though it's... You know, we have a, an extended big family. I have a daughter myself, and uh, we spend, you know, we, we have a great rela- great relationship, great everything with our family. It's crazy, but it's but it works, and it's full of love and fun, and it's real. It is. But it's, it's, you know, impossible. Like, for me, it's like I finally met the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with for real. And me she's too. my best friend and, and my soulmate, and it's like I didn't marry her Thank you. to be away from her half of my, the, the rest of our lives. You know? I, so I just this think way, we're fortunate. We're very fortunate. That we're able to to work together. Mm-hmm. And, and, we, we, and we don't get sick of each other. Which and we don't, is even I mean, better. you know, we don't, we it never really fight is. about, we never fight about something one of us did. We may have a, uh, a heated discussion about something that's gone wrong at the gig or something like that, you know, but it's never It's usually something thing. that it has to do with something else. Right, it's not us. So it works. Yeah. It's single parent I mean the fathers were with him you know on the weekend but it's still hard when you're not in a marriage you know with with your kid because it's like you're by yourself and it, it is hard it's hard on the, it's hard on the kid too it is you it know is. but it makes you stronger though it's, it does it makes you a stronger person well, my relationship with my daughter is great but the good the thing is is she calls me Papa. She's great. Okay. And she, and she's she's awesome, and she loves Robin and Dad. I mean, we have a blast. All you know, the four of us. You me would and, swear me and Robin she is twenty three years know, old if you talk like to her. My daughter her. She's and, like, and uh, the way she talks is so awesome. Okay. Yeah, my stepson, Robin's son, he's sixteen. My daughter's eleven. And Robin's other daughter's twenty four, and she has a three year old daughter. So we got a grand grandbaby too. Yeah, it's it's we have a it's crazy. Of everything. But it's awesome. But uh, my, the thing that's comfortable for me with. So. From me, uh, from with me and my daughter is my daughter's always she was you know born in 2003, so she's only known that Papa 
plays guitar and tours around the world. And she was listening to Broken Glass last week. She was week. last week, so she's... She's like, that's, that's quite I'm a stretch listening to Broken Glass right from, now. From uh, Mary J. Blige or whatever yeah. her favorite, yeah. current it's, favorite. It's so cute because she's a, you know, honor student, ballet, dancing, now gymnastics. And, you know, all the kids now listen to hip-hop and yeah. stuff, including my son, believe me. But uh, for her to say, I'm listening to Broken Glass right now, that was really that was like, How really do you cool. like it? She's like, it's pretty good. And she likes Kiss. Yeah. What's the song she liked? Uh, Great Expectations off Destroy yeah. Them. It's like the anthem. Yeah, well, but one of them, but she mm. liked that the best. I'm, I'm slowly trying to get her. She's, she's doing, very open-minded. She's doing it herself, actually. Yeah, she's kind of she got a, She's got, because uh, her and her, and her mom live um, like an hour from us. They live in Baton Rouge, um, like an hour from New Orleans. And because of the situation, you know, she's got a lot of time to herself. So she is exploring and learning a lot, you know, more about music and about everything in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. It's, uh, I mean, wisdom, perhaps, did you get off for young parents out there, young families, uh, kids going through struggles? You've seen the world come from, you know, a number of decades now. Maybe offer a bit of wisdom. People, you know, family going through struggles, you know, wanting to split up. Uh, not been there for each other. You guys have both been there for your kids, and uh, you guys are proud of your kids. Obviously, it's a beautiful thing to see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe something to offer others um, out there. You mean for the kids or for the parents? The parents, the kids. Um, I mean, it's just you know, for we're we're an odd family. We're never going to be normal because of what we do for a living. Yes. <laughs> and look at us. You know, we're never going to be the normal. But we're a loving, real, honest, you know, family. And um. You know, my biggest thing is when Robin and I decided to get married, we made a few rules. First rule was quitting is not an option because I will never do anything to hurt her or do anything I shouldn't do. And I know the same. Like, she always uses for an example. See, we know that, though. Right. That's what's I crazy. know without a doubt. Like, if she tells me, hon, I'm running this, I'm running this store, I'm going to... I know she's going to the store. You know, I don't question There's no, anything. Like second thought in the Yeah, mind. like we don't hang out all the time and do everything together so we can keep an eye on each other. It's like I trust her with my life, my heart, my everything. And that's we just the have good fun thing. together. Yeah. It's, it's it's crazy. She's my best friend. We go to the grocery together. together. Yes. Okay, let's talk about crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> I love crowbar. I talk about crowbar for hours since when we started. Yeah. Um, the reason why I started this was to have a voice myself in the hardcore scene. Yeah. That's where I come from. Uh -huh. And so, you know, it helps me to deal with the stuff that I've been through. That's why yes. I, I run these magazines. And I think it's great with you. No, it is awesome. I love talk, I talk with Cobra for hours. Look, uh, coming from the hardcore scene, I got very good friends in Twitching Tongues. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I saw them on, uh, on Twitter. And uh, I saw... One of the guys had a crowbar. Yeah, he had, a, he had a, like a hoodie crowbar or hoodie. Yeah. And it was like from uh, some magazine. And I was like... Nice hoodie, and I wrote, but I'm, I, I wrote it as Kirk though, and then all of a sudden they wrote back, and then the their, uh, what is it, the management Manager, yeah. wrote back and stuff, and they're like, oh, we noticed y'all were talking, and, and then both of us started, you know, back and forth with them, and then uh, they ended up sending us uh, an album, a CD, and uh, yeah, we even got like a yeah, like a twelve inch. Oh, and it's a lot. Same yeah, thing. It's, I love it. Good Good disc. Yeah, the, and they uh, have the girl, the girl singing on that one song. Track seven or something. Yeah, like that. and they did uh, the Suck remake. Suck my dick, of, my carnival. Yeah, which is cool too, like a hidden track. Sold. Yeah, after yeah. I heard that, I was like, well, like you know, if you yeah. do a carnival it's cover, like you a pretty much bunch know what's of, going on. Of nice, nice little yeah. guys too. Yeah. We met a couple of them, didn't we? At, at the hard, at the hard. Yeah, this yeah. is hardcore in Philly, but they were playing the next day. We were leaving for Europe, so. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, man, it's just you know we love, we love traveling. It's hard on the body, especially as you get older, but we love traveling, we love meeting people, we love meeting the fans, we love seeing the world. We also love doing it together, and then we love when we get home, you know, like I'm excited that we're on tour, but when we get home, I'll be excited that we're home. Yeah. And back to what we consider it's just normal, a, you know? Another, it's just normal, I don't know, yeah. it's kind of, I, I don't to even us, know, it's, it's crazy for me because in my head, I'm scared to fly. We know this. And I have flown so much, it is crazy. She's already I can't believe silver I, status. Since I, can't, March, I cannot believe I even fly. But I do. Wow. And I enjoy it, and I've seen so many things. And Like, she's like, like you know, we were like, we, were, we had just gotten back from Europe, 
and she was like, God, I want some of them German potato chips and, you know, from this and this and this. Yeah. And she's like, I'd move to Germany. I'm like, I would, you know, I really, I, I'm not going to, but I mean, I would tastes, too. It tastes different. It's better. I mean, I, it's not full of all the bullshit. All the though. preservatives and, and all that, it doesn't have it. So it tastes better. We're so comfortable. I mean, I, I've been overseas, you know, including like UK and Europe. It's been 38 times now since 1992. So, I mean, I've literally spent, like, you know, a year or, or more, more than that probably of my life, definitely more than that of he my life every, um, every overseas, year. you know, by touring. So, um, every show, every year. It's, you know, I, year. I do. For, I for an old guy, you think I forget everything. I Like you go from one country to another, like overnight. We'll be in three countries in one day. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, wake up in one, drive through another, into another, play, get up, you know, I mean, it's, it's nothing. And my son is like, oh, you're all over the world and you're seeing everything. And he's thinking we're like at a Palm Beach resort or something sometimes. I'm like, no, it's. We yeah. work and then it's time to go to, you know, close out everything, go to the hotel. Sleep as much as you can. Go to sleep and you wake up. Take a shower. It's work. It is fun though. I won't say say it's not. It's like, I enjoy it. The only, this like, I'm glad I'm doing an interview right now. Obviously to promote the band, but also to take up, to chew up time because this, this part of the day to me is a part that sucks. You know, uh, we've already sound checked. Merch is already set up. I'm just sitting around waiting. Give some wisdom. Here, give me one sec. You gotta change the card in this thing. I'm really enjoying this. Yeah. It's good. I, I appreciate your time. You guys doing an amazing together. It's like a family interview. It's good though. Yeah. I think it's something what was I'll, that say, I'll say in a minute too. Sure, sure, yeah. What was it? Uh, <clears throat> we were somewhere. Like I said, I don't know where I'm at sometimes. I'm not lying. Yeah. Uh, and it was, I was real sick. We, uh, I, I was sick before we had left, and I, I think it was to um, Berlin. Berlin. Yeah, I was real sick because I was taking all kind of medicine. Oh God, it's terrible. And I, I could have been, I could have had an interview with. Oh, in Metal Hammer. In Metal been. Hammer, and I was like, oh my God, the one day, and I, normally it doesn't matter, and I'll, I'll just, you know, if you don't feel good, he told me that. He's like, sometimes when you're sick, you just, you, there's, you have, the show must go on, or whatever. Right. Well, I normally try to, you know, I do everything that I'm supposed to do. Well, that day I didn't go with you. It was just like an interview day, like in the... At the Metal Hammer headquarters. Yeah, I went the next day. Well, it so happened that the guy, uh, the, the, editor. the editor of the magazine, he, he wanted, where's, where's, where's Robin? Yeah, well, we're going to put her, gonna, do an interview with her, too. Yeah, because it, like it was like a family, some type of... Some type of family thing or something. Well, we're talking, I didn't interview. We were talking a lot about what we're talking about now. Yeah. But I mean, to me personally, if you're able to do it, um, <clears throat> the way we do it, it's great because we're old enough and our kids are old enough and, and the whole big crazy family we have where we're able to do this and tour together and work together. And it's the best thing for a relationship because to me, like I said, you know, that's, that's why so many relationships and the music industry fail because how can you, you know, whether someone is cheating or not cheating, you can love each other in the world, but if you're never together, you don't have a relationship. You don't have, you don't have. I mean, I was really, 
I was depressed. Like when he was with Dan and stuff, because they they toured a, you know a bit longer. And uh, some of the tours were. And I, I, I mean, I really it's missed him hard. when I was home. I mean, it's like I didn't go anywhere. Like I, you know, I go to work and stuff, and I go home because I never. I'm not gonna go out because I don't. I don't want to go out without him anyway. So it's like you count counting down the days. I'm like, I know I love him. <laughs> Like I just missed it. Just, them. It works. It's 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 like one of them, one of the uh, probably rare occasions where we are very codependent. We admit it, but it's a healthy codependency. It's not a, you know, it's 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 more of like, you know. I think it's real. It's just real love. We mm -hmm. actually just love each other, instead of saying codependent because. Right. Well, you know what I'm saying. Though. I mean, we People because we call like it codependent. right, but yeah. it's not an unhealthy thing. It's a healthy thing. Look, I mean, people have to work together and be codependent <clears throat> for thousands of years. Right. Animals are. Yeah. It's become, I guess, uh, a taboo for some strange reason in this the modern the hyper individualist uh, society that we're in, where everyone lives alone, everyone does everything alone, their own phone, their own profile. Yeah. No one likes to blend anymore, but blending is how we got here, collaborating, mm -hmm. working together. Right. You know? That's true. For us, it's a, just a situation that it just works, and we're we're very fortunate with that. It, 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 it's also like if you look at it, I don't want to <laughs> say a test, but if we weren't gonna meant to be together, right. we, we wouldn't be. They would have been a we've long spent, time ago. Since yeah. we've been together, we have been together every single day except when you went on tour with Down, with Down or um with the King of Kingdom Star. Yeah. That's every, it. every other thing. So if we didn't like each other, we'd be like every no. second, pretty much of every day. And yeah. it just gets stronger and deeper and better, and you know, um, it's just it's just great. So I mean, for us, you know, if if to anybody who's able to be in the situation we are, it's a great thing, you know. And uh, if not, like, you know, to me, this is just my opinion. If I were to be, you either need to have an attitude like Lemmy. Where you know you have one thing and you're married to the band that's your wife, and in a way the band is it's my musical wife, the other guys and our our relationship and whatever and making yeah. music together. But Robin's my real wife. But for me, I'm lucky. I get to have my cake and eat it too, and I get to have both. I get to enjoy. It. And that's the thing too. I, I don't do need I don't need to hang out with the guys and go and do all that kind of shit. Because Robin's like I call her a chameleon. She's like she's one of the dudes. Like they they talk they say whatever the fuck they say in front of her just like they would. I hear some stuff. If she was a yeah. three hundred pound dude with a fucking beer a beer in his hand and a you know whatever covered in tattoos. I have then, a comeback sometimes, but but I mean the thing is they, they're either. comfortable being guys around her. Yeah. We and it wouldn't along, work if so. they weren't. So we all get along great. We're at all home, great friends. That's the yeah. thing is, we hang out at home. <clears throat> Once we go home, we got Matt and Jeff. Matt and Jeff across live the across the street. the street from us. So, so we all, it's always like, yeah, hey, I'm yeah. cooking. Come on over. Let's watch a game. Or, you know, let's go out for some drinks. Let's go out to eat. Whatever. So we do a lot of shit with them at home, and too. Tommy, you know, Tommy just got married. Yeah. Just say congratulations to Tommy and Absolutely. Lisa. Yeah. He just got married, and Tommy lives... Just like in another, what do you say, like suburb? Like, yeah, different suburb. And uh, well, his his wife lives in New Iberia, which is so like a four, two and a half hours, two and a, two and a half hour drive. So we don't see Tommy as I'll, much. Yeah, not as much outside of the band. But, but I mean, they're working on that, <clears throat> you know, balancing out with where they're gonna live. It's like New Iberia or Kenner. Yeah. But uh, if but believe me, if they were in Kenner, oh, we would yeah, probably too. all. Cause everyone gets along great, together, so. and, and it's very important. Um, a lot of bands don't do that, and you don't have to, you know. But for us, the fact that Matt and Jeff live across the street is just too convenient. I mean, it's like, okay, I'll be there in a minute. And they just walk, you know. Or I'm cooking dinner or something. Yeah, they come over. I mean, a lot of times she'll just she loves to cook, and we'll just, you know, when we were writing the record, she cooked, we would write, and you know, the next day go to the, go to the jam room. She'd come and videotape everything. All the riffs that we were doing like, while I was arranging the songs and whatever, and then, you know, come back to the house after and eat. They eat a lot too, just to say. Especially Jeff. Jefferson, but, uh, yeah. Jefferson but it works out. It's a he can eat. It's a crazy, uh, crazy fucking big 
family thing, but it works. And for that, we're grateful and blessed. Yes, we are. friend of mine from upstate New York, uh, Casey Dorr, sings for a band called Gunther Weasel and the Section 8, the old like upstate New York sludge bands. He actually uh -huh. moved to New Orleans recently. Oh, really? And he hangs out with Jason Baldwin, uh -huh. buddy of his. Oh, I think I met him. Oh, really? Yeah, we met him. Yeah, yeah, no, Jason. We met Jason, sure. yeah. So these are all good boys from upstate New York. Upstate New York has got a great sludge scene. That's awesome. It's, uh, I didn't even know that much. Going back to the 90s, yeah. The section eight are considered like like Bagany of upstate New York. I saw Jason like two weeks ago. Yeah, when uh, Saints lost to the damn Falcons. Yeah. But uh, he came out. Yeah, well, I've met I've met Casey, I think. Um, that's a trip though. Yeah, man. Upstate New York has always been a very strong supporter of good metal. Yeah, we always we used to always play, you know, like Albany and I guess that's upstate and Poughkeepsie and yeah. you know. Uh, and, it's on. We've, I've we've only played been there twice. To New York? Yes. Yeah. Once you, you, you've only been to the city. Yeah, the interviews and then the show. Yeah, press and then we'll be playing. It's busy. Yeah. It's very busy. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, I'd like to see city. more, you know, all the... It's just hard because we don't have days off, so you can't really... Say see. Yeah, you know, you can't really... I love the accent. ...get out and, uh, and, and do shit. Yeah. It's like, you know, you sleep... She'll get up early and start fooling with business on, on the phone or whatever. And then, you know, I usually get up and some of the other guys, too, when we get to the venue. We get up, yeah. get cleaned up, get loaded in, and the new day begins. I try to have all the times and stuff, you I know, try. together. For yeah, she got everything organized. Excuse me. <clears throat> and I try to rest my body, mind, and, and my voice, of course, as much as possible. And it, uh, it, it's amazing that he sings every night. Yeah. It's but that's his thing. I think it's better for him to do it like that. Well, I mean, every, every day you don't play, you're spending money and losing money, and you know, and to me, it does it. If you're on I mean, the road, look, you got to pay even if you're not. Well, yeah, if you're not like playing that day, the machine keeps it rolling. Depends. It costs money to keep the machine rolling. So every day that you don't play is a wasted fucking day. I think we're very resourceful <clears> though, like with this. Yeah, this the way we got stuff. shit rolling with this. We go to Walmart. Walmart. We go to Walmart. Buy groceries. Yep, All of us together up. with a little basket. I'm gonna have to post a picture <laughs> of us. We used in to do our shopping at like one or two in the morning with a little buzz. Yeah, and, and uh, then, uh, we all put our stuff together and make sandwiches. And yeah, it's real simple, cheap, easy. We're not uh, self-contained, and it, it works. You know, there's no reason, no reason to, to not be making money. Every day we're making money. We're selling merchandise. We're promoting the band. We're making money from the gigs, you know, and that's what we do. It's our family business. Yeah. Yes. Last question. Uh, you were saying earlier how important it is to laugh at oneself in order to overcome oh, yeah. struggle and get through shit. Absolutely. Um, would you consider uh, a career or maybe a side project in comedy or acting? A lot of people don't know that you actually have some experience in that realm. One of my good friends who's working with me on this magazine. Uh -huh. 24, 25, you, you got into Pantera 10 years ago. So he didn't grow up with the home videos like I did. Right. You know? So he didn't know who Izzo was. You could be. Uh, I always get asked about the voiceovers. He's got the voice. I told him. Uh, you know. Like whatever. No, when you were, we were praying last night before we, because we did, we prayed. Yes, we did. And uh, he was praying out loud, like, because we were in the bus. And it's kind of loud with the generator. And he was praying, and I said, Kirk, I don't want to interrupt you, but you could be a priest, like a preacher, because his, yeah, his voice is so... Well, every, every like time, James Earl Jones and the Lion King or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, every time I go it, on the radio. It, it's, it's a convincing like, voice. I, I was at... Uh, it's convincing. It is. It like makes you listen. <laughs> I was at uh, some a, cu a couple of times, like, I've sat down at, like, you know, real radio interviews, and... Uh, with the headphones and everything, and they're like, 
dude, I love your voice. And I thought they meant my singing voice. I'm like, ah, thanks, you know, it's not. And they go, no, no, I mean, like, you really should get in a radio or something, dude. You got a voice for it. And I'm like. He does. He has a, he, you <clears> have a, a very clear, unique voice. Why, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I could do cartoon voices, probably. I told you. What's, yeah. what's the one uh, we figured out? I don't know. Me either. Some, but, uh, girl. some girl that does Rugrats now. She was big in the 80s. Oh, Angelica. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. From the Rugrats. The yeah, girl. Yeah, a voice like her. I can't think of it. E. G. Daly is her name, I think. She's kind of got the high squeaky voice. And all when I was younger, I, I really should have. My voice was a lot higher. I should have. I should have sang is what I should have done. But you know what? I don't Daddy'll do There's not sing. enough liquid courage for that for me. So. <laughs> we do karaoke. Him, he, he does the singing. That's right. Right. Well, I do the paperwork. John Bush, you know, he made the crossover. Yeah, yeah. And he's got that voice. I love, I love John's voice. Oh, me so. too. Me too. Uh, but he was, look, obviously, like Anthrax in every incarnation. But That's I, the White Noise album, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then Stop <clears> Forward, <throat> yeah. who I love. I mean, I'm a 90s kid. So. Well, I'm an Armored Saint right. guy. So, yeah. Like, as much as I love John, I love him with Armored Saint. I love Belladonna with Anthrax. You know, and he's such a great dude, too. Out under the air. Yeah, but no <laughs> It's just a different sound. Yeah, Armored Saint. Armored Saint's a great underrated band. You know. Big time. So. Uh, speaking of old bands, Mahogany Rush. Yep. Montreal, West Island. People don't know about that. I met Frank's nephew a couple of times mm -hmm. when I was with them. Frank Marino's nephew. I think it's his nephew. Not his son. That's one of my favorite pictures of you with the most yeah, Rush. Rush. Uh, and you can't find stuff anywhere in New Orleans for sure. So I had one made at a at a little hat shop, you know, this one Mahogany Rush hat. Yeah. But uh, I, I love Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush Live is one of my favorite records. You know, and uh, it's just such a great guitar player. So. Totally. We we uh. Well, we always talk and we're like, sometimes you're surprised to find out who is from Canada, you know, and it was like, uh, I mean, Triumph? It, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love Triumph. We jam on Triumph together. Right before we left, like a, about two days, two or three days before we left, uh, just for the hell of it, getting ready for the tour, I, I played some Gordon Lightfoot. <laughs> Don't get him on the, uh, <clears throat> but we, all, we always play Triumph uh, at the, on the jukebox, you know. We really don't play much as, as we start to get, if we're out, we start getting the buzz in. He's the seven. The Thin Lizzy starts coming the in, but then the Motorhead kid. comes in and the heavier shit. The, uh, oh, the 70s songs. All the rock. songs that I know the songs, but I don't know who sings them. He yeah. plays them. All the older love, like love songs and stuff. Yeah. We do I'll, that. Yeah. We go, I'll say it. I'm going to say it. We go to the old people bar. <laughs> That's what we call it. And the first time we went in, they looked at us like, uh, you know, they, oh, it's kind of iffy, whatever. We got a beer. When we walked to the jukebox, they looked like, oh, no. They're like, gonna what ruin, are they going to play? They're going to ruin our night. They're going to ruin it. And we play, what did you play? Like a 70s something? Like bread. Bread. It was you bread. Know, like and they, bread, they just kind of uh, went. <gasps> Seals and Cross. Now they and love us. Janet, Dan and John Ford Cole. Yeah. Yeah, Poco, Dr. Hook. Um, you know, that kind of shit. All the songs yeah. I know and I like, but I just don't, I don't know who sings them. And he Bob plays Welch. them. Yeah. Yeah, I play all of that's that's what I grew up on the radio. So yeah. now the the uh, bartender always messages him, when are y'all coming out? So. Right. And they lo they love it. Like uh, Rusty used to love it at Pat's. Yeah. Whenever I'd play, uh, he'd be like, oh, I love your song selection. Because I, I'll, yeah. you know, I'm very knowledgeable. Uh, I'm trying to not with the newer bands or all the heavy bands. I mean, I know the real metal bands from my era. But um, I'm very knowledgeable with all the I'm trying to think what the radio what he soft rock type you Rusty's know. favorite song it was a uh, it was something from the 70s like even 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 Tommy uh, our drummer Tommy Buckley hit me up he's like oh man I'm like yeah dude he goes um, look for the wedding we want to use uh, that song Mag Magnet and Steel he goes who sings that I said Walt Egan and he's like he's like all right cool cool and sure enough you know he knows it. after they got married Magnet and Steel came on that's a great song too it is I got the 45 at home yeah, 70s rock is, I mean, yeah. I was born in the early 80s, so I was still, you know, hearing all that 70s rock. Yeah, because yeah, the radio, that's all, well, yeah, when you were kid, that's rock. all you heard was the radio. Right. I mean, and yeah. albums. If and you were at home, you played albums, but I mean, you know, 
You didn't you, have. You were a, lucky to have an eight track or a cassette deck in your car. You know. You yes, never even see the, the band really, unless no. there was a special on TV or something where you'd see them. And it's like you in front of the TV, like, oh, what, what, what do they I, really look like? That's and, one of the big jokes. Um, when Christopher Cross won his Grammys for the for uh, you know with, with the first Grammys for uh, Ride Like the Wind and sa Sailing and all that kind of stuff, nobody'd seen him and he's kind of a big kind of heavy guy, kind of going bald and like he has a great voice. All these women are oh my god, I'm in love with Chris. Then nobody knew what the fuck he looked like and he, they're like and you know the winner is Christopher Cross and he goes walking on stage and all the women are like oh my god and they thought he's like this hunk, but you know what he does sing great and write great. So. It's all about the voice. Yeah. It is, it is. It really is, you know? And I mean, having, you grew up with, obviously, all the great metal and hardcore from the States. Yeah. Your voice, forget the word underrated, I don't think it's underrated. Your voice has been one of the best, most influential to me. Well, I, I mean, it's different, but it works. Yeah. I Stay strong, believe in yourself, never give up. Quitting is not an option. That's right. And Symmetry in Black. Obviously, the new album. Incredible. So, thank you. Congratulations on that. I pray for 10, 20 more Pro Bar albums, bro. So do we. I mean, there's no reason to keep the ball. It has to roll. Yeah. We have to make money, so yeah. it can't. You know, we can't oversaturate. I can't we need wait till the next one. Me, I'm personally, to start I mean, writing. I, I got into a, the Severed of Wicked Hand, and I was like, oh, God. it's like the best. The, the recording of it, just, and then uh, the symmetry in black is it's, even it's, better. It is. It's so if there is it, even better. It will be. Have faith. How will we handle it? We'll handle it. Okay. By kicking ass every night like we do now. Yeah. Oh yeah! Thank you for being the interview. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Know. you. First time too. Thank man. you for having me. I hear so much about how important you are to Kirk. And now this just only confirms it with my two eyes, and uh, it was really a pleasure speaking with you guys. Thank you so Great. much. Thanks for having us. We appreciate right. it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, guys. No problem.